Hi, welcome back to another episode of Are You a Fan? If you like this episode, give us a like, share, follow, and uh, why don't you stick around or go back and check some of our old stuff out. Okay, so as we do every week, I got a question for the audience and for my co-host Joker. What's up? If you could like control your mass, like as far as like if you could grow, like say as tall as the, mm, let's say Sears Tower, but you can also shrink back to your normal height. You can't get smaller. You can only get bigger and, and back to your normal height. Would you? Uh, part of me wants to say yes, but also with the stipulation of I can't get smaller. I think that'd be more fun to get smaller than bigger. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like, I, bigger, yeah, that could be entertaining. That'd make travel real quick. True. Because instead of having to get a car, you could just, like, run half a block and you're, you know, a couple miles down. <laughs> Cause a smaller earthquake. <laughs> you know, maybe, but, you know, <laughs> I'm halfway across the state now in five minutes. I feel I feel like your neighbors would hate you. <laughs> oh, they would. <laughs> You know, honestly, I didn't even think of it that way, but just for transportation alone, yeah, I think I'd... I think that'd be the only reason I would do it, to be honest. I think I'd use, like, if you kept, like, if you also got stronger as you did it, I think I'd use it, I'd start my own moving company. How about starting forever ago? Yeah, except this time, like, I could move an entire, I could just, like, be like, pile everything up there, put it on the, put it on the plat, on the plaque thing and that, I'll just pick it up and take it to the new place. That'd be nice. Right? Okay, folks, that brings us into this week's character, Adam Smasher, a.k.a. Albert Rothstein. Okay, let's get into real world. Albert Rothstein, known by the alias uh, New Clone and Adam Smasher, is a superhero appearing in American comic books published by DC Comics. Adam Smasher is known for his power, growth, and super strength. Take us away. So he was created by Roy Thomas and Jerry Ordway. He first appeared in the All Star Squadron number twenty five in September of nineteen eighty three. Thomas chose his name as a tribute to his friend and fellow comic book fan Alan Rothstein. That's kind of cool. And I mean, that's, that's got to be cool to have your name kind of immortalized in comics, dude. Right? Heck yeah. Which um, that's kind of what we got for real world. We couldn't find much on this character as far as like inspiration or real world. I mean. Sure, you could. I mean, what comic doesn't have a character that can just grow big? They pretty much all do at some point nowadays. Exactly. It's it's one of those base powers, like kind of like super speed or flying. Like, yep. Every comic has a character that can do it. So that will bring us into in universe. So the godson of Al Pratt, the Golden Age Adam, Albert Rothstein acquired his uh, metahuman powers of super strength and control over his molecular structure, allowing him to alter the size and density of his body from his grandfather, a reluctant supervillain known as Cyclotron. <laughs> wow, that is like on the nose. Just a lot. <laughs> I was going to make you wonder what, what was he reluctant about? Just doing it, or... I mean, it could have been, like, either a Mr. Freeze situation or a, like, a bigger villain's forcing them to do it. Yeah. I was like, that. that's the only way I'm, like, imagining a reluctant one, where he's like, he's like, I'm not really a bad guy. I just really need the money. <laughs> so, yeah, totally a Mr. Freeze situation. <laughs> yeah. So, these powers acquired from his grandfather uh, would allow him to fight crime first as Nuclon and then later as Atom Smasher. As Nuclon, Albert was a character member of the Infinity Inc. and subsequent, subsequently served in the Justice League. Which is pretty cool. I actually had never really known about Infinity Inc. until I started doing this. I almost thought That's it was the first time I heard about it. <laughs> yeah, I was honestly like, as I'm reading this, I'm like, wait, did they do like, did they do like they'd done with others, like pull them from a completely different comic branch? No, they exist in the DC universe. It almost sounds like I didn't actually look into it at all, but it almost sounds like a like a B team Justice League almost. Oh yeah, kind of like uh, almost like the like in football, you got the minor leagues, and then you can work your way you got the into NFL. the yeah. Yeah, it's almost what it sounds like to me. Okay. Again, I have absolutely no idea because I didn't look into them. But well, folks, if you want to do uh, more research on that, maybe an episode on that team's creation, let us know. <clears throat> I don't know what's happening with my <laughs> Okay. He was considered a dependable but rather insecure and indecisive superhero. 
Well, in Infinity Inc., during this time, he had a uh, mohawk haircut. While in the J- uh, JLA, he forged a strong friendship with fellow former Infinity Inc. teammate Obsidian. It's a weird thought. You know, what little I've seen and know of Adam Smasher, it's weird to think of him with a, a mohawk. It is. Like, just uh, like he always has the cowl. Yeah, it doesn't really... And that's that's mainly what I know him with, so it's like it's hard to imagine without it and with a mohawk. Right. A also, weird. also weird for a guy who's like considered more of a bruiser brute to be like indecisive, but considering his age, it makes sense. Right. For years, Adam Smasher cherishes his role in upholding Pratt's legacy and constantly seeks to prove himself worthy of his golden age idols. Which you know that that's fair because a lot of the heroes are like that, especially the younger ones. Oh yeah. M- oh. Quite a few heroes, like, it makes sense, it makes sense wanting to, you know, be seen as worthy. They're looking for approval. They, oh, yeah. Most of these, care, a lot of these young heroes, they get into the game because they saw the older ones, and then, you know, joining the team, they're constantly going to be think, looking for that approval, which I just feel can lead to mistakes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at uh, some of the Bat family. Oh, right. When Albert's mother is murdered in a plane crash engineered by the terrorist Cobra, he becomes consumed by vengeance, nearly crushing Cobra in his hands before he's talked down by his teammate, Jack Knight, who convinces him that he should not taint the memory of his mother by associating it with Cobra's murder. Which fully, I fully agree, especially if, like, the character doesn't have a history of just straight-up murking people. Yeah. It's one of those, if the character's known for it, yeah, assalamu alaikum. Go do whatever you want. But yeah, if they if they don't have a history though, it's like, mmm, this ain't you, bro. And, and I like how it always seems how it comes up too. It's like, it's not you, don't do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> so not long after that fatal crash, Albert, with the aid of Metron of the New Gods, uh, goes back in time and forces the weakened villain Extant? 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 Let's go with Extant. That's what we're going to go with. So he forces the weakened Extant into a position where he takes the place of Albert's mother on the plane. I got dark real quick. <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh, this ends up saving her life, but makes Albert's, uh, Albert a murderer. Even if there's no other way to contain Extant and stop him from causing further harm, and also ensures that history is preserved in terms of the number of deaths on the plane. Man, one of these days we got to do an episode on Metron because that guy is a grade A Richard. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I mean, of course he would lead Adam Smasher into that situation knowing Adam Smasher would do it. (laughs) From what little I know of the new gods, that just seems fairly on point for their MO. Yeah. They do have a lot of uh, Richards in that group. (laughs) The new gods are fair. We'll get a little (laughs) off topic. We can do an episode on the new gods if anybody wants it. But, um... Also, like, it's also one of those, like, yeah, I guess it makes him a murderer, but if that's the only way to take this villain out. It, it seems like a, a Thanos move of, uh, we're going to go and just, eh, the baby Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just, like... <laughs> when Captain Marvel's longtime adversary, Black Adam, reforms and joins the JSA... He and uh, Rothstein develop a rivalry at first as Al refuses to believe Adam has reformed. This soon turns to kinship after Adam justifies Al's murderous actions towards Extant, which Black Adam would. Oh, yeah. And, of course, that's what's going to make them bond. Right. Is <laughs> you'd be like, oh, I get why you did it. I'm not mad at you. Like, oh, I must be friends now. <laughs> yeah, like, I totally support that decision. Also, kind of cool seeing the movies. Uh, I because like when I first saw the the movie, I don't know a lot about their either the character stuff, but like reading this, I'm like, oh, so they were interacting. And now it makes sense why he's in his movie. Yeah, completely. <laughs> so encouraged by Adam, uh, Adam Smasher grows frustrated with JSA's moral boundaries, especially when Cobra blackmails authorities into get, granting his release. Albert and Adam promptly quit the JSA and, after Cobra's escape. I mean, villains, man. You live in a superhuman society. That's just par for the course. Exactly. This is going to happen, especially with the normal human cops. Right? That happens all the time. Look at all Batman's villains. (laughs) Right? Oh, my God. Like, yeah. Completely. Okay. So, shortly, uh, shortly thereafter, the unlikely duo settle each other's personal scores. Adam kills Cobra. 
while uh, Roth, uh, Rothstein kills the dic dictatorial president of uh, Can Condock, Adam's home country. It seems like some uh, murder my boss mentality. That's exactly what that is. Like, but it just seemed to kind of add to their kinship. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. I'm like, but at the same time, I'm like, well, I mean, you guys couldn't just do it yourself. You're still doing it. No, oh, maybe they just kind of did it for each other to kind of build that friendship. It's which a is team a building <laughs> exercise. <laughs> Trust fall. God, that's a horrible team building <laughs> exercise. <laughs> Though at the same time, is it though? Because he got rid of a dictator, got rid of Cobra. Hmm, that's that's a real moral conundrum. <laughs> it's not the way to go about it, but I guess it worked, right? So Adam Smasher would later help lead a team of rogue metahumans, including some other former Infinity Inc. teammates, Brainwave and Northwind, an invasion of Kondok and overthrow its op oppressive regime. Uh, Adam Smasher finally initially fights against his JSA teammates in conduct before deciding instead to help forge an uneasy truce. Black Adam and his compatriots, though, uh, can remain in power as long as they never leave the country. Which is fair, and Black Adam's uh, Black Adam's been known like Black Adam has a history of working with uh, the Justice League and like the good guys. Like Black Adam isn't looking to conquer more territory; he just wants to protect his people. Yeah, as we went over in his his episode. It was very, he cares more about his own people. He doesn't really care about power for power's sake. Yeah. Like, he does become corrupted by power, but he still uses it to protect his people. Just yeah. Just extreme hostility. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, that's a deal. And honestly, I like how they show, like, Adam no like Adam Smasher knows Black Adam well enough that he can make that deal. Definitely. So, uh, Adam Smasher remains in the Middle Eastern nation for a time, although he eventually begins to question Adam's motives. Rothstein uh, perishes in JSA issue number 74 while fighting against the Spectre, but is revived by Black Adam's lightning and carried back to JSA headquarters. Man, that's some real bro love. Oh, yeah. That's, that's some... also in JSA issue number 75. Oh, 75. My apologies, <laughs> folks. Yeah, uh, that's got to be a cool way to get brought back. Right? The living lightning? Ooh. <laughs> Tingly. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> so he would later be put on trial for his actions and conduct and plead guilty to all charges. Uh, teammate Stargirl promises to be there for him when he gets out. Whilst, at, whilst in jail, he is approached by the founder of the Suicide Squad, Amanda Waller. And you know how that always goes with her. <laughs> yeah. A man Waller does not discriminate whether you were a good guy or bad guy. You're in prison, she's using you. That's all she looks for is you're in prison. So as far as she's concerned, you're a bad guy. Yep. And you are now expendable. <laughs> yeah, she has a real... Oh, man, she has a rough track history with that. Oh, yeah. In the new 52s, he is seen assembling a new suicide squad under Waller's orders. Instructed to fight Black Adam and unbeknownst to Adam Smasher himself... Push his family to over, uh, this pushes his family to overreact. Which I mean, yeah. Also, I feel like if I was Black Adam and I saw saw Adam Smasher show up, I'd be like, "What the heck, dude?" Right? Like, didn't I just didn't I literally bring you back from the grave? Well, who knows? It was in the fifty twos. That might have changed. True, the fifty twos were always um. <laughs> As we've said on, I feel like nobody is surprised that we are not fans of the 52s. Heck, I've yet, mine is very few details. I've found very few people that are fans of 52s at all. Same. It's like one of those like, okay, they did this thing right, but God. The rest of it, they screwed up. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's all we got for Adam Smasher's origins. Let's get into powers and abilities. Okay, so already super strong at his normal size, which is kind of cool. And that uh, seven foot six in that's his normal size. That's a very big normal, right? Jeez, this guy could have been the could have been the NBA. Okay, so yeah, seven foot six inches or two point three British <laughs> meters, folks. I mean, calm down, easy in the comments. Uh, though, though recently he has uh, depicted as being a more normal height when not using his powers. Yeah, because I already feel so like that's... just knocking off a foot. <laughs> right? I, I mean, sure, that's still tall, but it's still at least normal. Right? 
So Adam Smasher's strength and density increases proportionately to whatever size he chooses. It was explained in JSA issue number 75 that his muscles and bones actually break and reform as they grow in order to achieve these great heights. Oh, God, that sounds painful. God, I hope that it doesn't actually hurt. You would hope, but given some characters out there. God, that, that's got to suck. I would honestly, at that point, I'd probably never use my powers. You know what? Can I retract my answer to the question at the beginning of this episode? <laughs> I guess. It, I guess the one clause is at least hopefully we can't feel the pain. If I can't feel the pain, I'm down. If I have to feel that pain every time, I'm never using that power. Oh God, no! Like emergency situation. Because you gotta think that's gonna be breaking and reforming as you grow and get smaller. Oh God, where's all yeah, the extra a- mass go? Okay, so in the DC Encyclopedia, it is stated that he could grow up to 60 feet without problems. Whether there is a limit to his height he can grow is unknown. At 60 feet, he was strong enough to knock out Power Girl with one stomp and easily dismantle most of the JSA during Black Rain. Which, for those of you who don't know who Power Girl is, she's kind of a more OP Supergirl. Which does a lot, because Supergirl's a kind of OP, just like Superman. Yeah, like, she's more OP in the sense that she's older, so she's more into her powers. Yeah. And Kryptonite doesn't affect her, so. That's where she's really OP. Yeah, that's <laughs> kind of what gives her an unfair advantage. But, like, to be able to take that out, that's basically like saying he stomped out Superman. That, that, that's an impressive feat. Right? Yeah, get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate the people I work with. <laughs> Okay, take us away into other medias. So, not really surprising. He has a very, very small other media section. So, in TV, there is a character partially based on Adam Spasher uh, named Tom Turbine that appears in the Justice League. Can you imagine having a name like that? Tom Turbine. Uh, you gotta imagine going through school. You had to have been bullied like crazy. Oh, my God, <laughs> right? So, Adam Smasher also has a minor non-speaking appearance in Ju- uh, Justice League Unlimited, which I think is the first time I ever saw him. Same, actually. I think that's when I first like got introduced to the character. Um, and for his only film appearance, he is set to appear in the DCEU film Black Adam. And then in video games, he does make a cameo appearance in Injustice Gods Among Us. And that is it. Oh, what about uh, villain in Earth 2 version of uh, that? I've missed that, yeah. Uh, he does have a villainous Earth 2 version of Adam Smasher in the CW show The Flash, which I don't remember. Now I kind of want to go back and find was, that episode. I was going to say, we might have to rewatch The Flash. Okay, well, uh, folks, that's all we got for Adam Smasher. Stay tuned. More characters on the way. And uh, I guess I have to ask the question I ask every week. Joker, you a fan? Honestly, I'm more indifferent on him because I haven't seen him in enough or even read any of the comics he's in. It was like, I'm not not a fan of him, but I don't know enough about him and haven't seen him enough to really say yes. Fair. I'll say I'm uh, I'm more of a, just uh, after doing some of the research, I'd be interested to read his comics and see if I'd be a fan. I like the relationship they kind of, like, showcased with him and Black Adam. Definitely. And I'm curious to see that bromance. But other than that, like, kind of on board with you. I'm eh, kind of indifferent. Indifferent. Like, I definitely, I don't hate the character. He seems like a cool character, but very little about the character. Yep. So, but you know what? For anyone that's still listening, you got something out of this? Enjoyed the episode? Or even liked the character before from a movie? comic cartoon hell even that t-shirt that you saw one time you're a fan too you want to jump on this train why not subscribe and share with a friend dick rail out y'all keep riding them rails